Hi students, welcome to exercise 30, sketchinal, sketching polynomial functions. Alright, well, a uh, polynomial function we already know is y equals x squared. So that's the parabola that you guys know fairly well. Notice that uh, at 0, 0, it goes back to the other direction. I'm just going to give three points for now. I think that's enough to kind of give the idea of what we need. So this is a parabola. Okay, uh, we say that the x has a multiplicity of 2 because it's x times x. So this would be a multiplicity of 3 because it's x times x times x. Well, the x cubed function, okay, a little bit different than the x squared function. The reason is s squared, an even, uh, sorry, an even exponent will make sure that it's always positive on both sides. If it's an odd exponent, well, anything negative to the power of, a, of an odd exponent stays negative. So this shape still appears except that it goes into the negatives. So you're going to have 0, 0. You're going to have 1, 1. If you plug in 1, you get 1. But when you plug in negative 1, you get negative 1. So what you end up getting is you kind of get two half parabolas, both facing other direction. So you get the half parabola this way, and you get the half parabola that way. Notice that this would be the general shape for anything to uh, an odd exponent. So x to the power of 5 would look like this, x to the power of 7, and so on. All right, so now what happens when we change the coefficient in front? Well, we've seen the negative x squared function. That would be just one going towards the bottom. But we have ne negative x cubed. You're going towards, you're going to just flip both positive and negative. So the positive becomes negative, and the negative becomes positive. So the points we get are, when you plug in negative 1, you get positive 1. And when you plug in 1, you get negative 1. And you're going to get, again, exactly the same shape except it's a reflection over the x-axis. Okay, and x4 actually looks very similar to x squared. It might be a little bit flatter, okay, so instead of going straight up, it might be a little bit flatter and goes up quickly. So the, at 0, 0, you have this. At 1, you have 1. At negative 1, you have 1, okay, because it always stays positive because of the even exponent, and you have kind of a shape like that. It should look exactly the same. I'll probably bring up... Um, graphs in class just to show the slight difference, but they're very similar. All right, a couple things to note. Even degree polynomials have similar shape. So you saw x squared and x4. These are very similar shapes. They're not exactly the same, but they're very close. Odd degree polynomials have similar shapes, so I kind of described that in B. And when you have a negative leading coefficient, it will reflect the graph over the x-axis. So before we were like this, and the negative makes it reflect. Okay, so now, next thing, let's find all the zeros of this polynomial function. So this polynomial function is presented f of x equals to three binomials. So the zeros of the polynomial function, so again, the zeros are when y equals zero, right? So that's what the zeros mean. So that's when y equals zero. So basically when this is equal to zero. So the zeros will be x equals to two, x equals to negative three, and x equals to one. Right? So when this is 0, 0 times something times something gives you 0. If this is 0, something times 0 times something gives you 0, and so on. And now the y-intercept. So the y-intercept, that's when x equals to 0. So x equals 0. And that one's pretty easy to find, because if I was to plug in f0 here into this function, so that's f0, I'm plugging in x0 for all three of those. So what I would get is negative 2 times 3 times negative 1, and you multiply all those together, and it gives you 6. So basically, it's just the multiplication of the, all the constants in all the factors. Okay, well, that's enough information to sketch my graph. So I'm going to pl put in all my zeros, so at negative 3, 2, and 1. So at negative 3, we have 1 here, right? At 2 and 1, we have them here and here. So I can raise this up now. Okay, so that's where my zeros would be. Just make sure we're good zeros. Um, let's put the, put the values underneath there. All right, so those are the zeros. And we also have uh, at y equals 6, we have a y-intercept. Okay, so it doesn't really matter for the scale here. So I'm thinking I'm going to sketch the graph and just put the 6 in after. Okay, well, a couple other things to look at. Notice that if we multiplied all three of those together, x times x times x, we would get x cubed, okay? So the, the leading coefficient is positive. So it means 
in a x cubed plus b x squared plus c x plus d, if you were to draw it in general form, the a would be positive, which would mean you would have a function, an x cubed function that starts down and finishes up. Maybe I'll put it on the graph here. So you're going to have something that starts over here and finishes over here. And that's all really the information I need. So I know that our graph will start bottom here. It's going to go up. Okay, it's got to come back down to this 1 here. It's going to cross the 1, and it's got to come back up for the 2. And there we go. That's the graph. The value I can add to this is I know that this is 6. Okay, so again, we I'm sketching this because I know the x cubed function, the positive x cubed function, does something like that, right? So that's the same shape I have here. You go down here, and you go up here. The difference between these two functions is this one only has zeros at x equals 0. This has zeros at minus 3, 1, and 2. So the shape becomes a little bit different. But notice that the beginning so, and the end behavior, beginning and the end behavior, are the same. All right, in this last example, it's going to be a little bit harder because there's a few more steps to do. Uh, so notice that I gave you the polynomial in a non-factored form. Okay, so the first thing you've got to do is you've got to factor this whole thing to be able to sketch the function later. All right, so let's go with this. Um, note, it might be easier to factor the negative out of the polynomial first. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite it with the negative factored out. And it just might be easier to work with. Sorry, that's not a positive anymore. That would be a negative, right? Because I'm factoring the negative out first. Okay, I don't like working with that positive or that negative coefficient up first. Okay, so what I'm going to need to do now is to factor this polynomial right here. I can forget the negative, but it stays there. I just can not deal with it until the end. All right, so I'm looking for factors of four. So those are the possible factors of this polynomial, right? So I'm going to try if x equals to one. So if I plug in one, what I get is negative. Okay, and I'm plugging in x equals 1 here, so it's 1 minus 4 minus 1 plus 4. So notice that all that, 1 minus 4 minus 1 plus 4, that gives you 0. So p1 is equal to 0. Notice if it's negative 0, it doesn't matter. So therefore, x minus 1 is a factor. Okay, so that's, don't forget, that's the first thing you got to do. you got to find one factor, and from there you can just work with the rest. So, I need to completely factor this one, knowing that x minus 1 is a factor. So, I'm going to use my synthetic division here. So, I'm going to put my leading coefficients. Okay, so notice that I just took all the leading coefficients from there. Okay, the negative's still out there, still floating. Okay, so drop the 1. Okay, so again... Drop the 1, 1 times 1 is 1, minus 4 plus 1 is minus 3, multiply minus 3, add them together, multiply negative 4, and you get 0. Again, this is the remainder, Again, and means that this is a factor, so you've confirmed it. Alright, so now I'm going to rewrite p of x here. So it's going to be p of x equals to the negative factor that I took out at the beginning. I'm also going to have x minus 1 as a factor. And now, this trinomial here, those values, determine the coefficients of the, the rest of it. And I can completely factor this to x minus 4 and x plus 1. Okay, so there's the completed factoring of p of x. Notice again, that negative stayed in front the whole time. All right, well, um, now I need to sketch the function. So I'm going to sketch this function here. Notice that I found the zeros, so the zeros are already found for me. And also note, and this has to do with the negative, since the leading coefficient is negative, it will follow the shape of negative x cubed. Okay, so a negative x cubed, let's just kind of quickly sketch it. We saw that at the beginning of the notes. This is negative x cubed, which means the beginning of our graph, the beginning of our graph was starting over here, and the end is going to finish towards the negatives. Okay. So let's put our zeros down. We have zeros at x equals 1. We have a 0 at x equals 4, right? So that's from that one. x equals 4, so I'm going to put those down. 1, 4. And we have x equals negative 1 from that one. 
Okay, so I'm going to put my zeros down. I'm going to mark them with their value. Okay, and um, I'm going to follow the exact shape as I said is this one, right? So you ho you ha start from the top and you finish from the bottom. So you start from the top, you come back around, and you're going to finish towards the bottom. Okay, there's one more value I can add to this, and it's the y intercept. And if you look back at your function, this is your function all mapped out. This would give you negative 4. That's actually the value of this over here. So this is negative 4. Another way you can find that would be looking at this right here. If I multiplied 1 times negative 4, which is negative 4, negative 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Sorry, negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. And then you multiply it by negative 1 here. So that becomes negative 4. So again, that's how you got that value. All right, guys, that's it. Um, I hope that kind of makes sense. I think if you follow the different shapes of the original graphs and then go through the zeros, I think that's all you really got to do. Good luck and see you later.